Hey kids, Grandpa here. Hey, I was reading the comments on my last video and uh, one of my viewers asked me a question. Peter Bilski says, I sure would like your opinion on the Sirius 40DS. This is for a family member of his. And I thought, well, you know, that's as good a reason to make a video as any. So I uh, decided to go ahead and put this video together about the Sirius 40DS. This is a German made 40 foot uh, cruising boat and I remembered recently I'd seen an article apparently it wasn't that recently from 2015 where Bob Perry had talked a little bit about the boat let's take a look at that article all right so the first thing we see is a sailing magazine article in the Sirius 40 DS by Bob Perry one of the comments he made was that the hull was blocky with a lot of freeboard and that kind of bothered me I don't like a lot of freeboard on a sailboat then he goes on to talk about the fact that the compartments seem like they were very tight inside and that's just a function of the layout and lastly he talks about all the different configurations it's available in with a suggested retail price of somewhere around the six hundred thousand dollar mark okay so let's take a quick look at some of the other options the keel configurations on this boat uh, they offer a number of different keel configurations they offer the standard keel then they offer a twin keel and then they also offer a swing keel which I think would be my first choice so I guess I'm a little confused with all the different options for inside the interior and then the different keel options. You know, this really is sort of a custom boat being built. Um, but you know what? The company has a video out uh, talking about this boat. Let's go ahead and check out this video. When we developed the Series 35 um, in 2009, we had no idea how successful we would be with this model. Being nominated for the European Yacht of the Year, getting the highest points ever awarded from Yachting Monthly and lots of very, very good critics from all the other magazines. We were encouraged to develop this new and slightly radical line and brought out the Series 310 just eight months later. And we are now on the Series 40, yes? After five years of development, uh, this is the biggest milestone in for Sirius at this very moment. So we are now in a saloon of our Sirius 40 DS, um, which is like on all other Sirius tech saloon yachts. Here we have the saloon uh, very raised up so that you have a perfect contact, a perfect eye level to the, to the crew who's sitting in the cockpit. And the main thing here to understand is if you sit down in a saloon, standing up in a galley, um, sitting at the interior helm or sitting up in the cockpit, you're always on the same eye level. And around this very eye level we have designed the big windows the 360 degrees which makes this such a nice living space in here so sitting in the saloon here um, this is the nicest place to be of course in the harbor or in an anchorage um, but also at sea because um, if you pop down here and have a book um, stay out of the wind out of the sun or out of the weather which you don't like um, you feel very comfortable in here you don't get seasick because you stay warm you have the visibility outside see the horizon and we don't have this eight steps down into the boat it's just easy to walk out through the door no washboards and join the crew outside um, on the other hand, this is a very, very comfortable place to be if you want to be social. Um, this, for example, um, is our evening table if you are just on wine and chips. But if you want to dine with six or seven person, you just take the table out and push it together. And then you have a very big and very solid table. Even if it's collapsible, this is a very, very strong stronghold here. You can lean on it. And um, that easy. It's single hand movement. You just push it back and have enough space to sit very comfortable here and put your legs over each other. We're here in the galley of the 40, um, uh, same visibility out here, so even when you're on passage you can prepare some, some dinner or, or lunch in here or just make some dips or prepare things for being in the harbour. Um, the good thing here, um, you can brace yourself um, very, very easily all the way through and you can actually, if you have to walk through the boat um, on um, uh, a passage, you have very good handhold here. The galley is equipped on the 40 really with everything you could look for, so we have a 100 130 liter um, proper fridge front opening here 
Um, we have a 50 liter ice box down here which could go to minus 20 but could also chill your wine at um, 11 degrees or um, be another fridge. We have four burner cooker um, down here with a nice oven um, in here which includes a grill. We have a microwave including a grill as well on the other side and a small nice gadget here. We have the space to have a proper dishwasher in here which is really good sized. The special thing on the galley is also because of our Dexalum design um, we have deep um, um, bilges down here which are perfect use for storage. Um, have a look down here we have lots of cradles um, in there we have um, more space um, for food around here and that goes on literally all the way. Um, before we came from Germany we put um, 930 kilo of drinks and food and brushes in here. This is very nice accessible and very good accessible so you don't have to get your guests up if you want to go to the next bottle of wine um, because it's not on the cushions um, but very very easy to reach to. Walking on the galley you have very short ways because this is your table where you can put things. Here's another place to put things and um, me like cooking very much. Um, I always want to have a bin um, which is easy accessible which I can leave open and put things into which have a decent size 65 liters here and there's another one for cleaning tools around there which holds back. Always something people are um, stunned about are all the fittings for dishes and the amount of space we have in the drawers. So most of our customers um, bring us their crockery and crockery and we try to find a way um, to fit that in. Um, this is all very practical design here, um, very short waves, all the things you want to have on the table here are just right here. Pots and pans fitted in here, or self-closing drawers, even if you jam them closed, they just go like this. This were our sweet sinks, salty sinks in here. And these are the two drawers dedicated to the navigation st station, already crammed with lots of things in here. So same as for the saloon and the galley, um, goes for the interior seating position. Um, it's directly at the entrance. When you come down, um, you have the perfect view, perfect visibility around here. So you could um, have a good view under the sails from here. You have a sliding hatch out of glass on top of you where you can see the mainsail and even the windex. And you have the possibility to um, brace yourself here very nicely on a saloon area. Have your inside steering here and have your throttle control just on the side here. It is possible to get a wheel if you want to have that but then the shard table have to face backwards. Here you just um, adjust the seat to your height uh, or to your wished visibility. If you turn around here you have a big shard table with a big shard box under here um, where you can store your charts and have a good view outside here, have all your controls on the side here and again the possibility to steer the boat on this outer helm control here. This is actually not only um, control of the outer helm, it is also control of the rudder directly. If you press the power steering button then you're overrunning the autopilot and have the possibility to steer the boat, steer the rudder directly without the autopilot, making uh, slightly raining, waiting in front of a bridge, lots of turns and swivels around the other boat just sitting in here. So directly at the entrance we have an oil skin locker um, which is actually heated directly um, by the heating and just in front of that um, there's another locker also heated by the heating for all your life jackets and your rubber boots. The special room is for sure our workshop or technical room which gets lots of thumbs up at the boat show. Um, actually you can't see it, it's hidden down here but you just have to pull up the seat and push this up and then you could actually walk down um, into the men's shed where you can sit on a toolbox, have all your filters around here, all the technique built in here, anything which needs service, um, a little vice and lots of storage um, for all the spare parts and um, all the tools which you might want to have here. 
Also down here you have the main access to the engine, which comes in as the last step of production. It just goes down here one and a half weeks before delivery and slides into here. So if you ever have to take it out again, it's just um, as easy as that. Nice little touch is the toolbox itself. Um, it just stands here, C for C, but it is a trolley, it's at wheels and have a handle on it. And um, if you open it, you find loads of tools in here. Um, all what you actually need in lots of layers. Very well organized and if you're not the only one using it, you see exactly what is missing at the end of the day. So for access to the dipstick, um, it's just here on the um, starboard side of the entrance, um, so you don't have to open the workshop or, um, or the, motor, the engine room, you just have a door um, which leads you into this directly. We are in the aft cabin now, which I thought from looking at the first plans might be in a six bed version a bit of a, a compromise, but it's actually not. We have a nice um, a headboard here where you can um, actually launch television down there. Um, we made a skylight on top here to get more air and see the stars actually. Um, two windows, um, a big cupboard, lots of storage underneath and a very good access to the Technic behind. So all over the boat you will find lots of storage, um, so directly at the entrance, a few emergency sinks, drawers, literally everywhere. So for most customers, being the first time on board of Azerius, this is the biggest surprise. Um, coming around here, um, just under the settee, on the saloon, we are using the space double um, for a very nice, luxurious center cabin, which is actually in the very center of the boat. So um, it's absolutely square. It's one um, one sixty wide um, to two meters long, and it's in a very gravity center of the boat, directly over the keel. You don't have splashing water like in the back. Um, you don't have the chain rattling like in the front. Um, it is the nicest cabin to be actually on the sea. Um, here is a lee cloth living under here, which you can raise up. Um, this is a space where actually Alan MacArthur or other circumnavigators would like to sleep in the very center of the boat. The room design was not only for having a cabin, um, because we experienced that if you are more than two people on board, interest might be different. And if in a saloon is only talked about um, boats, you can sit down here, have a hideaway, read a book, look out of the window, um, have lots of light, not feeling claustrophobic, and just close the door and be a bit out of the way for a while. We've got storage here as well, so very, very deep drawer down here, um, a very big locker up here and as well a nice cupboard. Cupboards on our boats um, switch the light on itself if you open the door and the light of course goes out again if you close it again. Standing height in all our boats is very comfortable on a 40 with nearly two meters in all of the rooms, head, to head height and good view out of the windows here. Big hatches everywhere which um, have a fly gaze and a screen on the other side to wind the light out. We are in the front cabin now, whereas on all our previous um, and smaller Dexone yachts, um, the center cabin is the owner's cabin. This here is the owner's cabin on the 40. Um, you have a very, very wide, um, big room which goes up all the way to the mast. There are lots of different interior versions. You can choose lots of bed layouts as well. Um, see that in our brushes and our plans on our website. So despite of the big um, hanging lockers on both sides, you have um, nice drawers under here, um, which are very deep and very easy to organize. Um, there's storage under the floor plates, under the seats as well. And a clever thing here, normally if you come into boats, the front bed is very, very high up. So you actually have to climb in. This is because of regulation. You have to have a special distance to have your emergency exit. Our guys find another clever way to do that. They're just steps living under here, which hook in here to have a nice step up and have the bed nice and easy. And at the same time, if you want to go to the deep storages under here, it holds itself up. We are in the front here in the end seat hats, um, which are just dedicated to the front cabin, to the owner's cabin. We have a real ceramic wash thing here, which is 80 centimeters wide, very easy to clean, and you can wash your hair without setting under sink, everything under water. Um, this goes away here as well, if you like. Um, loads of storage down here um, and up here as well. 
and um, the toilet here in this boat actually have a BD function as well. So in the very center of the boat you will find another toilet, another hat. If you come in here, we have a very huge shower cabin, um, which have a door which is clothing this way. So that leaves you with 90 to 80 centimeter wide full standing height shower cabin here and um, you could also if you're on passage or if you find that more comfortable sit down here and um, have very easy showering. For having it easy to clean um, you find Italian ceramic on the wall and on the floor of course color choice is up to you. Um, this toilet is in the very center of the boat, very near to the keel, um, and you sit very enclosed in there, so you have good breathing if you're at sea and it's directly near to the entrance um, in the very center of gravity center of the boat, so with very little movement. So wherever you lift the floorboard, you have direct access to the outside hull. We don't work with inner liners, so um, there are no hidden spaces, nothing where water can collect. Behind there are deep storage, um, cool storage actually. See the keel bolts here, um, there are 14 of them um, attaching the keel to the hull with a very strong hold inside, glued in there. Um, all the strong back which you see here is laminated into the hull and the hull diameter um, down here is the size of the um, laminate is about 45 millimeters massive laminate under the water line up to 70 millimeter in the front section and this is how we like to build boats we have lots of customers sailing in sweden and norway they hit rocks from time to time that should not harm the boat in most cases. In the cockpit everything is about ergonomics, so um, you have a very good seating position here. The seats are curved in a very nice way so that even on the sea, on the seaway um, you could brace yourself on the backbone and not nuggling on a flash. You can brace yourself very nicely down here if you're a big person or a tall person. If you're a bit shorter you can brace yourself up here. And you have a very high combing all the way up here and all the way around the cockpit. So sitting like this here, this is a very, very sheltered position um, behind the roof um, where you can just see the sea go by. On the six bed version, we um, have for the headroom in here designed outside a small launching area where you actually could sit very relaxed um, and enjoy the sun if you find one. Um, on the 4-bed version, this castell is not there, will look like on the other side, so we have even a larger cockpit down here. A nice comfortable table here as well, so um, this is um, just as it is, because the cockpit is wide enough, um, so you have space down here, and, um, but you can make it even much bigger, you just fold this up here, and then you can make it this size, or if you want to dine, you can fold it out full size here and then in the end have a table which is 1.3 meter wide and one meter long. So um, being at the helm um, you have a raised position here for a better overview. Um, the roof is only 1.4 meters, so literally everybody can look over here. But here's a clever design on the wheel as well. Um, this wheel gives you a lot of space to go by if you have to do mooring lines, but also it comes over to the side. Um, if you're a smaller person, you can just stand up here and have um, the wheel position here. But the best thing is if you sit up here, um, lean comfortably against the um, the guardrail. Um, you have a very nice steering position here and a very good overview. But also, if you sit down here in a bit more nasty weather, you can brace yourself very good here and um, actually have a very nice view through the windows because they're just on the same eye level, as you know, and um, have a nice steering position here. With the small wheel, um, you also have a good feel and you don't have to have this big movement like on a big wheel all the time it just um, is a small movement necessary here and if the ferry crossing over to this side you just go over and sit on the other side and have a look from here the whole design of this boat is laid out for single hand sailing because if you are the two of you um, one can be just 
occupied with other things or out of order for a time. So um, anything is in direct control of the helmsman. You have your main sheet here, the Genoa winches are right side back, all the instruments, everything is operated from the cockpit. Um, your boat thruster, um, your electric further control here, and if you sit over to this side or even forward, um, you can take the whole um, plotter housing here and cut it over to this side or put it down here or even if you're sitting in a lunch position just bring it over there so that you have visibility from wherever you want to the data you have to have. Thinking about transom, I always hated the idea of having, uh, having a bathing platform which I have to bring down for going into the harbour. For that reason we constructed this boat in a way that we already have a transom with a decent bathing leather. And if you go into the harbour, you just open the door and um, have an easy way out here without having extending parts to the back. But if you want to have your sea terrace and um, if you're on the anchorage or in a harbour and you want to have all this open, you just lock the door this way and then you have your operation here on this board. It's an hydraulic, so you just press the button and the whole thing goes down. Even if this is halfway up, you can stand on this with three or four persons. It's no problem at all. It's made for that. Um, this is absolutely rock solid. Um, to go down here and you have a very very huge bathing ladder down here which goes about 1.5 meter deep into the water so this is very easy to come up and you have very good solid drop rails um, to um, use the cockpit for bathing or swimming. So on a six bed version you have one very very big very huge cockpit locker down here which takes easily two folding bikes and um, lots of extra sails, um, rubber dinghy, onboard engine, lots of big boxes here where you can store things in, hangers for the ropes. Um, all your fenders and all the wet things can go to the front locker. We have a big deck slust at the front where you could store bigger and wetter things as well. As I did not like the idea of having the wet fenders and ropes in the cockpit where they could stain my folding bikes or things which I have in there, um, you have a big deck storage in here, in the front, um, which easily um, takes um, all the six fenders, all the ropes. You find hangers here, um, the controls for the electric winch. Um, this electric winch is a standard one um, on this boat, 200 meters of uh, 10 millimeter chain. Um, here in the front could take more if you really need to. Um, this is all covered under the deck so if you get your anchor up you're not getting all the mud on deck. Um, no sheets are um, catching the winch. Um, it's all nicely and clean down here. Also you have the gas locker here for two big gas, gas bottles over each other and lots of other space for other bits and pieces you like to store here. If you're standing here raising the anchor, um, you have a very good bracing position. Just looking over here um, and see what you're doing. Thank you for watching um, the video of our series 40DS. If you like to have more um, information, just um, give us a call or send us an email. you find more pictures and lots of more things to explore on our website at www.sirius-werft. That's W-E-R-F-T dot D-E. Bye. Okay, so some really cool things to point out on the boat. It has tremendous storage and use of space. The keel bolts are accessible, which I really like. I really like that wheel design, and I really like the flush deck up on the bow. Now, the only negative thing that I came up with with looking at this boat was that the, uh, the main sheet traveler, there's really no main sheet traveler, uh, and that's the only negative that I could come up with on this entire boat. I think it's a pretty awesome boat. I uh, reached out to some folks at some of the live streams that I was on this today, asked their opinion of it, because uh, it, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money for the boat. And the general consensus is, you know what? It's worth it. It may be a lot of money for the boat, but the boat is worth the money, so uh, everyone thought it was a pretty good deal. So, anyhow, I thought you might enjoy taking a look at this uh, Sirius 40 Deck Salon. Pretty awesome little boat, very expensive, uh, new. I saw a used one for sale um, 
37, 35, 37 foot boat uh, right now in Germany for sale for about 145,000 US. Um, so that's a pretty good value, actually, um, considering how much the 40s are, are going for. Uh, but you know, you, you have infinite options and you can lay it out any way you want to and have whatever on the boat that, that you'd like. Um, so it's, you know, it's pretty awesome in that regard. So anyhow, I'll bring more of these videos here in the near future. If you like this kind of thing, please do like and subscribe and we'll have more for you later. Thanks guys.